Yo guys, it's your boy Dave here, the Open Source Gangster, and I want to show you a few ways in which you can speed up your Android device. So, let's get to it. So the first way to make your phone feel faster is to turn off or adjust the animation speed. Now this is going to be the only method that I'm going to show you that will not require you to have a rooted Android device. To adjust the animation speed, let's go into your settings menu. You want to go down to developer options. Now if you do not see developer options, go to about. And for each device, it's going to be different, and depending on what version of Android, it's going to be different. But you want to go to software information. For myself, on an HTC One, I go to more, and go to build number, and tap on it multiple times. And this will display developer options within the settings menu. So now we can go back to developer options. And then we can scroll down to advance. And going into animation, we have the window animation, transition animation, and animator duration. We can adjust these to suit our needs. So right now I have them all, I have it on one. Now let me just show you. If I turn this all the way up to 10, look how slow this animation is. Like I said, on 10 this animation is freaking slow. But then I can turn it off completely. And look, that looks almost instantaneous. So, like I said, you can adjust the animation speed, and this will play an effect on how responsive your phone feels. So you'll be surprised, but it plays a huge effect. Next up is an app called Greenify. So if you ever noticed that apps that you opened maybe two or three weeks ago are still running in the background, Greenify is a tool that will cure that problem for you. So Greenify is pretty neat, because what it does, it hibernates certain apps. This means that the service the app uses will only be accessible when you actually open it. So for example, over here, let's go to my app list. I hibernated network signal info. Now this app pretty much tells me just information about the current Wi-Fi network I'm on. However, I opened this app maybe once two weeks ago and it was still running in the background. So using the app Greenify, I was able to hibernate it. So that way, it's not going to run as a service in the background or it's not going to use any of my other components on the device unless I actually open it up. So apps such as Dropbox, Facebook, Hangouts, Messenger all use Google's cloud messaging. So that means that if you do hibernate these apps, then they will not receive push notifications. So it's ideal that you probably don't want to hibernate Facebook or Messenger um, or Dropbox if you actually use it and if you actually depend on push notifications from it. But then again, if you really don't use it and or you only use it occasionally and you don't really care about notifications, then it's perfectly fine to hibernate it. Number three on the list is an app called Cedar. Now there's really no easy way to explain what exactly Cedar does. The end goal is to reduce visible lag. Now you notice at the bottom, it has something called Enthropy. Enthropy is pretty much like a random pool of data that the kernel pulls from. Now when this value gets too low, the kernel has to regenerate the random bits. And that generation causes lag within touch inputs and other noticeable parts of the operating system. So what Cedar does, it kind of helps that and in a complicated way helps to kind of solve that issue. Now I will admit, this is a controversial app because a lot of well-named developers or well-known developers admit that this is nothing more than a placebo while others will swear by it. So like I said, it's controversial, maybe a placebo, but either way a lot of people in the reviews swear by it and swear it works. So to enable it, all you have to do is go up here and select on and we choose to start automatically on boot. And the developer says the longer you're running this for, uh, the greater difference you'll notice. And I see my level Anthropy went up to 4,096 at the bottom from 3,000, so something just worked right there. The developer mentioned, and I probably will agree with this, if you're running a later version of Android, especially Android 4.3 with the whole um, trim enabled and everything else, you probably won't notice that much of advantage to using this. But if you're running an older version of Android, like Gingerbread or Freyo, then this will probably be a good use to you. So check it out for yourself and report back your own findings with this app. The fourth option is an app called CPU Tuner. Now, if you're running an overclocked kernel, then you can obviously overclock your device. However, even if you're not on an overclocked kernel, you can still do a lot of great things with this. So as you can see, down here we have frequency settings. So let's say you always want your device to be on max performance. What we can do is we can adjust the minimum frequency to 1350 megahertz or whatever your device frequency is. So you can push up the minimum frequency so that your device never falls below that frequency. And in addition, you can also adjust your profiles as well. You have uh, different triggers. We can do a trigger, a different value on a battery. When a screen's locked, you can adjust different frequency values. Uh, so for example, one thing I used to do is when I have my device plugged in, I'll always have it wrapped up to the uh, highest frequency setting. So you can do that as well. 
and you have different profiles and uh, governors. Now, I do want to kind of send out a public service announcement for a quick second. Do not keep your minimum frequency up high all the time because that will actually burn out your CPU faster and can cause damage to your device. I recommend maybe turning it as high as 594 for your minimum frequency. But once again, this is a great way to make sure your CPU does not go down to 384 megahertz or 172 megahertz where your device has it. It'll definitely keep it on a higher speed so your device will feel faster. Last but not least is Clean Master. Now, what Clean Master does, it allows you to clear the cache files from your system and user applications. Now, we can go here and go to junk files, and it's gonna scan all of our applications, system and user data for any type of cache files, and even system for any system cache. Now, I recently cleared the cache files before I had over 200 megabytes of cache data. Right now, I'm down to 24, which is not bad. And there's system cache, I can clear that too. Um, and thumbnails as well, but we can clear that out and uh, save some, ourselves some data. What's also neat is it has a memory boost where we can go down here and it pretty much clears our running processes. I'm not a big fan of clearing running processes because the whole task killer thing, but you can do that too. So we can select that and it'll boost it and it'll close all these applications um, and just keep some certain ones open like Messenger or Google Plus. So like I said, that's another neat feature. Not a huge fan of the whole boosting option, but I do love the junk files and ability to clear the cache files and save some space and clear up your device to for faster performance. All right, guys. So this has been a few ways in which you can speed up your Android device. If you have a method that I might not have mentioned, leave a comment below telling us about it. But like I said, all these methods are great and I highly suggest that you download them and just try them out, um, all these different apps. And it could definitely create a good performance increase within your device. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for some more guidance and videos. Thanks.